In this video, I'll give you a quick overview of the OpenSprinkler firmware 2.1.0. This firmware has added a number of new features, including support for per station water time within a program, automatic water time adjustment based on online weather data, and a unified mobile user interface. Before we start, please make sure that you have firmware 2.1.0 installed on your OpenSprinkler. If you haven't upgraded to firmware 2.1.0, please go to OpenSprinkler.com support page and follow the user menu or our online tutorial video for instructions on how to uh, upgrade firmware. This firmware has a built-in mobile interface, so you can access it either in standard web browsers or using our free uh, OpenSprinkler mobile app. The mobile app is available on iOS, Android, Windows Mobile, Amazon Kindle, and BlackBerry. In addition, we also support desktop apps such as Chrome app and OSX app. Just search OpenSprinkler in the App Store and you should be able to find and install the app. If this is the first time you are using OpenSprinkler, you need to know your OpenSprinkler's IP address. The mobile app has a feature that can automatically scan your local network and discover the OpenSprinkler's IP address. Alternatively, you can also click button B1 on OpenSprinkler to display the IP address onto the LCD screen. To use a web browser to access OpenSprinkler, just type in the IP address in the URL. In the following, I'm going to use the Android app as an example for demonstration. The default login password is open door. It's highly recommended that you change your password upon the first successful login. So here's the home page where you see a list of menu items and a weather icon. And if you click on the upper left corner, uh, the icon here, then that brings out the sidebar. Let me explain the sidebar first. Here you see a list of additional menu items. The first one is Manage Sites. Uh, this is where you can create uh, profiles for additional open sprinklers. So it's useful if you have multiple open sprinklers and you want to manage them in the same app. Next are Export and Import Configurations. You can use these to export your um, current controller settings and programs into uh, through email or the app's internal storage or a file and then import it later. So this is useful for firmware upgrade. Um, and uh, then it's the language localization. You can choose uh, any of uh, the 17 currently supported languages and uh, if you are interested in helping OpenSprinkler to support more languages, you can go to the About page here. There's a link to the localization website, which is crowdsourced. Um, and on this page, you will also see the link to um, the app's uh, GitHub repository. Okay, so next, advanced options. Uh, so here, um, there are disable operations. Uh, if you click on Yes, it will stop all the zone operations. And this is useful, say, for the uh, winter if you are not using OpenSprinkler for a long time. You can change password, uh, clear configuration. You can reboot OpenSprinkler. So if I click on reboot and confirm, then you can see OpenSprinkler reboots immediately. And then the last option on the sidebar is the W Underground uh, Diagnostics. And this, you can see the weather data that went into the calculation for today's uh, water time adjustment. And I'll explain this later. If this is the first time you are using OpenSprinkler, please go to the Edit Options page to configure the basic settings. This page is split into five sections. The first section is System Settings. So here you can type in your location you can either use a US zip code or a city name followed by a state name. Or if you are an international user, you can type in your city name such as Sydney 
uh, followed by the country name Australia. It's recommended that you use the lookup button to verify that your input is correct and resolve ambiguity if any. You can also use a weather underground the PWS uh, ID, which is a personal weather station. For details, please look at the user menu. Now, the location is used to automatically detect your time zone, um, daylight saving time, and also get uh, online weather data. So it's very important that you set the location correctly. Now, if I click on the submit here, the open sprinkler will immediately perform time sync uh, to uh, get your current local time. Now going back to the edit stations page, the next section is called configure master. So here you can define a master station or sometimes called master valve or pump station. It's basically a station that will turn on when other stations turn on. On open sprinkler, any of the first eight zones can be assigned as a master station. For example, I can set station one to be a master station. You can also fine tune the exact time that the master station will turn on and turn off by using the master on and off delay time. For example, if I set a five second master on delay and uh, negative six seconds of master off delay, the master station will open five seconds uh, after an associated station turns on uh, and six seconds before the uh, associated station turns off. So next is station handling. In the following, I'm going to use the terms station and zone interchangeably. Some people prefer calling it station and some prefer calling it zone, but they really mean the same thing. So here you can set the number of zone expansion boards. Now, the firmware can automatically detect the number of zone expansion boards. Um, so usually you just follow the detected number. And keep in mind that um, the firmware assumes that each expansion board has eight zones. If you have one of our newer 16 zone uh, expansion board, uh, each one of these will count as two boards in the software. You can also set a station delay time uh, this is the uh, time span that separates two consecutive running zones. So if I have uh, a, let's see, 10 second station delay, that means the uh, second uh, station will uh, open 10 seconds after the first one closes. Now the sequential flag uh, sets the station running mode. By default, Open Sprinkler runs stations in sequence one after another. And this is similar to standard uh, sprinkler controllers. Um, now, if two stations overlap in time, the controller will automatically serialize the two stations. However, if you want, you can uh, turn off the sequential flag. So this allows Open Sprinkler to run multiple zones at the same time. So if there are two stations which overlap in time, they will both open simultaneously. Okay, so moving on, the next section in the options is weather control. Now, first let me explain the percentage watering option. This is a scaling factor that applies globally to all station water times. It's basically a way to quickly scale water times uh, up and down to accommodate seasonal changes. For example, in the summer, um, I may want to increase the water time to 150%. Um, and in the fall, I may want to reduce it to 33%. And this is called manual uh, weather adjustment. Now, this firmware also supports automatic weather adjustment by using online weather data. To do so, you need to first uh, type in a valid uh, weather underground uh, API key. So this key is used to curate the weather underground website for real-time weather data in your local area. You can click on the information icon here uh, for instructions on how to apply for a key. There's no cost to apply for a basic API key, which is uh, more than sufficient for personal use. And once you have typed in the key, uh, click verify 
to uh, check if the key is correct. So next in the weather adjustment drop-down list, select the Zimmerman method. This method is named after Rick Zimmerman, who proposed and implemented this method. It combines your local temperature, humidity, and rainfall information to automatically calculate a watering percentage. So we can check from the uh, Weather Underground Diagnostics that uh, it automatically calculated that today's percentage of watering is 43%. Um, and basically, low temperature, uh, high humidity, or considerable rainfall will all lead to reduced watering percentage and therefore saving the water consumption. And the firmware, uh, by default, updates this calculation every 15 minutes. The next option in this section is called Use Rain Sensor. If you have a rain sensor installed on Open Sprinkler, you can use it to automatically stop watering when rain is detected. You can also set the rain sensor type, such as normally closed or normally open. Most rain sensors are normally closed. And once rain is detected, uh, a rain icon will uh, appear on the LCD screen, and also a rain detected message will appear on the home screen. So the last section is advanced settings. Here you can change the HTTP port number uh, and device ID. If you have multiple open sprinklers on the same network, uh, be sure to give each uh, open sprinkler a unique ID. You can uh, set a rain pulse time, and there's a brief explanation here. Uh, so open sprinkler has a built-in relay which can be used to, to switch a device other than sprinkler valves, such as landscape lighting. Now the relay t pulse time here uh, is useful for simulating button presses, and this can come handy if you want to use Open Sprinkler to control your garage door. Going back to the home page, now click on Edit Stations. Here you can change each station's name and attributes and uh, quickly test a station. To give each station a custom name, just click on the Edit button and type in a name such as For each individual station, you can also set the four attributes. The use master flag uh, means this station will activate the master's uh, valve. And ignore rain uh, means the station will ignore rain sensor or rain delay status. So this is useful for indoor zones or any zone that should not be affected by rain status. Um, and activate relay means this station will turn on relay when it opens. Um, and uh, the disable uh, attribute means this station does not exist, so it will not run, and it will be hidden from the user interface. So let me first commit my changes, and then uh, come back. Uh, so to quickly uh, test the station, you can just click on the Start button. So I'm going to click on Start. And so here you can see that the master station will automatically turn on because the use master flag is on. And also in the beginning you heard a clicking sound and uh, that, that is from the uh, built-in relay. And after you are done testing, you can just click on stop. And that's it. Now let's look at the run once program feature. Here you can manually start a one-time program. You can load preset water times either from any existing program or the quick test program. You can also manually uh, edit the water time for each individual station. And a value of zero means this station will not run. So now let's submit this run once program. And while a program is running, um, the home page will display the current uh, program and uh, the station that's currently open. You can also check more detailed information in the current status page. And here you can see not only the uh, stations that are running, but also those that are in the list waiting to run. If you want to stop all stations, 
you can click uh, stop all stations at the home page. If you want to stop an individual station, go to the edit stations page and then click on the uh, stop button next to each running station. So a little while back, I explained how to use the rain sensor to automatically stop watering when rain is detected. Now, if you want to manually set a rain delay time, you can use change rain delay, this feature. Um, basically, here you can set a custom rain delay time in number of hours. And once rain delay is uh, on, the controller will stop watering and programs will not run until the rain delay time is over. Now let's take a look at how to add sprinkler programs. At the home page, click Edit Programs. Here you will see a list of existing programs. You can create a new program, um, modify or delete an existing program, or reorder the list of programs. This firmware supports up to 14 programs. To create a new program, you can either click on the uh, button at the uh, upper right corner, or you can copy from an existing program. Each program contains these data fields. The first section is basic settings. Uh, this includes a custom program name, the program enable flag, and use weather adjustment flag. So when use weather adjustment is on, all station water times in this program will be multiplied by the percentage of watering uh, option that I explained before. You can individually set each program to use uh, weather adjustment. Next, you define the first start time of the program. And in a little bit, I will explain how to add additional start times. The second section is uh, program type. You can either define a weekday program uh, where you can then select the days of a week that the program will run on. Or you can uh, define an interval program where you set the program to repeat, say, every five days or 10 days or any number of days between 2 to 127. For either program types, you can additionally set an odd or even day restriction. So odd day means the program will only run on an odd numbered day of the month, and uh, vice versa for even day restriction. In the station water time section, you can set an individual water time for every station. Uh, a value of zero means that station will not run. And the final section is the additional start times. Here you have two choices. The first is fixed start times, where you can set up to three additional um, start times. Uh, Any time during a day is fine. The second choice is uh, repeating start times. For example, you can set the program to, say, repeat every one hour for uh, 10 times. And this is useful if you need to run the program many times during a day, or you want to break a long water session into smaller cycles. So this could be useful as a cycle and soak feature available on some sprinkler controllers. So that's all about uh, how to set sprinkler programs. Next, I'll explain a very useful feature um, called the program preview. Now, when you have a lot of uh, stations and many programs, it can be difficult to verify the program settings. On um, OpenSprinkler, you can easily visualize the program settings by using the program preview feature. And so here, each colored bar represents the uh, span of uh, each station's water time. You can preview for any day, and you can also zoom in or zoom out to check the program schedules in detail. If you identify an error, uh, just click on the colored bar and that will direct you to the specific program editing page.
So finally, let me show you the logging feature. OpenSprinkler supports logging by using a micro SD card. To use this feature, you need to have a micro SD card installed in the controller. So first to check the LCD screen to see if there's a micro SD icon. If the icon does not appear, um, you should follow the instructions in the user manual to install a micro SD card. Now at the home page, click view logs and you can see a graphical plot of the logging data. There are several options um, here that you can experiment with and you can also switch to a table view um, of the data. So this firmware supports logging not only the station runtimes but also rain delay and rain sensor status changes. So that's all about the main uh, features of OpenSprinkler firmware 2.1.0. For additional details, please check the OpenSprinkler user manual or go to the support page at www.opensprinkler.com. Thanks for watching this video.